everybody and welcome to a new smile tutorial on my first live streamed one this is going to be on making an heiress style room and if you're not familiar with that um i don't know what to tell you uh, you will be familiar with it after this hopefully and hopefully you'll know how to do it yourself i hope i explained that well so the basic premise of the heiress room is you're basically going to put flip your layers basically you have two layers you build on um there's layer one and layer two um layer three is like uh, liquid lava that kind of stuff that's layer three but the ones you build on are layer one and two and you could do some things to make a third layer by removing the effects doing some other fancy stuff i'm not going to get into that but you can make some really crazy things doing that so layer one and two basically the idea is we're going to flip which layer is on which layer basically we're going to make layer one in the background and then we're going to make our background layer layer one we're going to change from layer two to layer one and what that will allow us to do is create this weird sort of scrolling effect and it's best seen in like a long mostly horizontal hallway there really isn't that much i guess special with this type of room um you're just kind of building it backwards sort of the main purpose or gimmick of these rooms is really to make a stylized room i think personally they're good for like a marker they stand out really well so if you have a larger hack especially uh putting one of these rooms in it's kind of like an anchor people can get um a mental map and kind of figure out where they are based around certain marker rooms and these rooms work well for that otherwise they're really just an interesting um, visually stylized room so uh, let me see, I think... Come on, let me exit pussy tile. Okay, yeah, that's layer one. So, on layer one. Like I said, we want to build our layer one into layer two. So I'm gonna stick on the background layer right here. And to switch between um, layers and Smile 2.5, you just press F1. So, you place a tile and you press F1. Now you're on layer two. This is layer one. If I press F2, nothing disappears because that's just disabling and enabling layer two. So F1 just gives you which layer is active. It'll delete layer one off the screen so you can edit layer two. And then F2 just disables layer two. So you don't see that at all. So one of the things with layer one. So generally what you do is in a hallway like this, let's just do this. We have let's not get that thing there you would have something like this so if this were the hallway right here there's a door on each end you would have layer one all the way across we can't do that with the air stone and this room let me pull up the room properties here so it's one height it is f wide so it's 15 scrolls wide and i did that just to no we don't want to I just did that to demonstrate this further. It's easier to do this in a long hallway. A short hallway, the effect will be very minimal. So you'll want a longer hallway for this type of thing. Um, it doesn't have to be 15 scrolls. That's just what I set it on. If I place a layer one tile right there, or two of them right there, and I'm running through the room, that tile is static to this spot. It will never move. And that's kind of what you expect, because that's how the game and the hacks are built like that you know the layer one tiles are static to their spot they don't move and that's why this visual effect is very interesting because our tiles our foreground tiles and i'm using air quotation marks here are going to be in layer two and they are going to be moving our background tiles are going to be the ones that are static so because of that because they're scrolling so let's just um you know what, let me actually just make so an important thing to do here, and this will require some testing, is the background editor, because the scrolling is what's going to create this effect. Also, no, this is a Smile 2.5, or this is not JX. So you, your Y-axis scrolling is what you're going to want to pay attention to, your horizontal axis. And you can change this to basically anything except zero. Zero, you might as well just build it in layer one. That's a static tile. One will have small movement. F will be a lot of movement. 
well not a lot but it'll be the most movement based off of this thing so eight's kind of right in between um we can demonstrate the difference here let's so we've put those in layer two we have a layer two scroll And you could tell the floor's kind of moving. See, I haven't quite got to the end yet. You can see I'm off the map up there now. There's the end of what I've placed. But I still got some places to go. So, and here's the actual end of the room. So, with only six scrolls, I am mostly covered this room with tiles. So let's just add one more scroll in here. Oops, I on the wrong layer. Let's just add one more scroll in here. And this is something you want to test with your own scrolling to see. So yeah, so you see there it is. And I'm almost at the end, not quite there. So if I add one more scroll, let's see what happens here. Minimize this. So the first, th the first thing that I recommend, and there we go. Now, now we're all the way back here. So th this is the first thing I recommend you do. Find the scroll speed you want for your foreground tiles. You can change this to whatever. Let me show you a slight difference. So if I did it on F, this will increase the speed, which means this will now run short of the end. But that's fine, let's just test this. You can see it's scrolling much faster. So I'll actually need to place more tiles at the end to make up for it. So, yeah. so there's that, and I still got a long ways to go to get to the end here. If you change it to a different way, to one, this is the complete other end of the spectrum. Now I've got way too many tiles. This will scroll, but it's going to scroll very slow. So this is, you can kind of see how this scroll looks. <laughs> you're, you're running, but it doesn't look like you're going very far. For that, you need far less tiles. So if you don't want to put a whole lot of effort into uh, your background, which is technically your foreground, you'll want to set it at one, because for that, basically, I think I only used up to here. It might have been here or here. But for a 15 scroll wide room, basically all layer one would be built within these two and a half, two scrolls, maybe the third scroll. That's all you would need to build for layer one. So let's just take a quick look at our basic room outline. And I'm an idiot. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> I put this in the wrong layer. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> okay, but let's not pause it. But you can see the, the difference in what we're going for here. And you could do this, actually. You know what, actually? I might run with this. You can already see the difference in the scrolling speed between the static tiles on the ceiling and the moving tiles on the ground. You can kind of see up in the corner there. That tile kind of not <laughs> lining up properly. So let's actually make some things with this to come out of the ground and go the player has to run behind. Remember, layer two has no tile properties. Any tile you place in layer two will have no properties. So it's all, 
always, 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 and I can't stress this enough, always double check your tile properties here. And especially once we start building in layer one.
added the tide to create some other... I already have this weird horizontal effect, now I've also added this vertical scrolling effect with the water affecting the tile slightly to add some more visual interest. Um, you can also, again, mess around. You can add fog. Actually, let's go ahead and take a look, see what fog looks like. Probably look terrible to call it one, but... Oh. Yeah. You can add fog. You can add whatever else. Again, people should use FX more, in my opinion. You can do all kinds of interesting things. Just create a little extra visual interest in it. You might like this fog more than you like the water. It's a very important to experiment with it. So you, you can do all kinds of things with it. So this is what they all share in common. So basically, the only difference you're going to get is how much time people put into it and how detailed people make it. I mean, that's really going to be the only difference as far as the creativity with the Aris FX.